uh, because a lot of businesses don't do this. And so they only have what's called a front end. It's like the one and done, buy this one thing, and then they're no longer a customer. And you, you need to have this progression of stuff that people can buy from you. You keep them around, you extend their life as a customer and the value that they get from you as a business, as a leader in the market. So if you don't design this out now, then you're, you know, you're going to be likely to end up the one and done front end only business. And you're going to leave thousands and thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars on the table in doing that. All right, so now the actual product. So let's, let's talk a little bit about this entry-level product and what it might look like. Well, first of all, we suggest that you start with what's called a digital product, meaning a product that's delivered through the internet. So they come to your site, they, they see some sales material, some information, you invite them to buy something, and then it's delivered to them right there automatically through the internet, no matter what time of day it is. And you know the logistics are easy for you because it's automated. This is happening literally while you're sleeping. And uh, it's also instantaneous for them. And the reason for this is that there's just a lot of logistics when it comes to having to package together a physical information product in the form of manuals or CDs or DVDs. And there's a time and place for that. And we certainly go in more detail in the academy, digital versus physical products. For But for your first product, when you're starting out, your first business especially, we suggest, you know, just go with something easy, make it a digital product, um, some kind of audio that you deliver online or an ebook or something that's just downloadable, automated, easy. And, you know, that's something you can test quickly, see if it's working. And later on, you can add the physical aspects of, of a product or have other products that you actually ship out when the time is right for them. All right, so let's just list off quickly a few different product types that you might consider. A first very popular and obvious one is the ebook. So this is usually a PDF download. It may be uh, 30, 40, 50 pages. It may be 300 pages. It all depends on, on the market and the type of information. But it's a very popular type of product because it can be downloaded. The value is in the information itself. And, you know, so you, even though it's a book, so to speak, you can charge, you might charge. I mean, I've seen ebooks for $100 because the information is that valuable that's inside. So the ebook is a great place to start and often a very good entry level type product. Another type of product would be what we call the multimedia course or sometimes called the course in a box type thing. Now this could be digitally delivered or it could actually be physically shipped in a box but this is where it might be you know maybe it consists of several reports or manuals or pdfs uh, and it has audio and a video and you know tutorials and tools and checklists and it's a system. This is a system that walks them through the uh, whatever process you've put together and an example of this would be the coaching course that we started uh, you know a couple years ago when we first had the coaching course. It was essentially a multimedia media course system delivered through the internet, and that has now evolved into what is the academy or a monthly membership program. Another great type of product you can do is what's called the teleseminar. This one's very effective because everyone's got a telephone. All they have to do is pick up and call into a conference line and they can have that training and you can you can reach lots of people. I mean, I've known people who've done teleseminars for thousands of people at a time. And so it can be an hour, two hours of you sharing information. Maybe you're interviewing somebody, maybe you're taking questions, but the teleseminar is also a type of product that you can sell. And then you can record that and deliver that to them uh, as well that they can listen to later. A variation on that would be the webinar where people call in and are talking through a teleconference, teleseminar system, but then also there's a web aspect where they can watch maybe slides on their screen, maybe it's a screencast where you're showing them stuff on your screen, they can see your screen, and uh, so there's some services that'll help you out with that if you're interested, but the webinar is also another popular product type. Well, and I, I, we just did one recently, and I'm beginning to like them more and more. I know that everybody uh, has different ways they learn and what have you, but uh, uh, the webinar thing was really cool because as we're talking about stuff, you know, we were able to throw stuff up. I just love that. And people could go, oh, well, what is that? And boom, you throw it up and just show it right there live, and they can ask questions about it. It's pretty cool. I like the webinar thing. Yeah, that, that live interaction is definitely very effective, and people react really well to it. Um, I, that's something. I enjoy quite a bit too. Then uh, you know, the kind of one of the mothers of all products is is uh, is a seminar, like a live seminar. And actually, this was the very first product that I did. Uh, interestingly enough, was a live seminar. And you know, you book out a conference room, or you book out a, a room at a college or a hotel ballroom or whatever you think you can fill. Uh, you put together a presentation. Maybe it's a whole day. Maybe it's a couple hour workshop. Maybe it's two or three days long. And you uh, you know, you sell access. You fill the seats, and people come to learn from you. 
and uh, you know you can make a lot of money doing live seminars. There are definitely a lot of logistics to them, though. But obviously, if you do do this, make sure you record the seminar. That's what I did is for my very first product is I recorded the seminar and then I turned it into uh, CDs and a manual that then I sold online later for a couple years that made money for me too. Well, and interestingly enough, I mean, we've both now done live seminars and recorded them and made money off the DVDs. But I can say that before the idea behind the live seminar was that there was a higher perceived value, I think, of people coming. But I think that's starting to change finally as the technology with webinars and stuff are changing because, you know, if you can still get live access, it seems like you'd almost be willing to pay at least the same amount because for a live seminar, if it's going to offer the same value, if you don't have to pay for travel, hotel, you know, getting to the airport, getting from the bar- all that kind of stuff. So it seems like, you know, some of these other uh, ways are raising in value. Because uh, I, again, I know a lot of people that thought that, you know, to do the higher end stuff, you had to do a live seminar, but things are changing. I like it. Yep. That's that's a great point. So, you know, that gives you several ideas that you can think uh, about when it comes to choosing what products you might put into your funnel plan, what your first product might be. Uh, again, digital is a great way to go, uh, you know, or something that can be uh, delivered easily. You don't have to ship it out. So, you know, ebook would be great. A multimedia course digitally delivered would be great. Maybe even a teleseminar would make a great opening type product. So give that some thought based on your market. But the important thing here is actually you want to make sure you survey your market before you make a definite decision of what that's going to be. You want to put you know out to your list or you know by driving traffic through pay-per-click or something to a to a survey ask your market you know what are your top questions how hard has it been to, to find the answers to these questions what would you like to know you know about most what would be the type of product that would be most interesting to you an ebook or a multimedia course or, or a coaching situation through teleseminar and get that feedback so you can make sure that your initial product is one that is going to fit the needs of your market we were talking earlier in this episode about surveying the audience of Internet Business Mastery again. It's it's just a very powerful, you'll get lots of insights and it'll help catch any assumptions that you might be making that are actually not the best assumptions because you you get that actual feedback from the audience. So the tool that we like to use for this is surveymonkey.com makes it really easy to put together a survey and send that out to your market and then get a compilation of that data back to you. So make sure you absolutely do this before you commit to what that first product's going to be. Yeah, and this this whole survey your market thing, I, I love with such a passion because, you know, rather than guess or wonder or give your best educated guess, you can just ask. I mean, it, it, it makes such sense, but for some reason in let's say regular business, there's so much of this, like, let's just put something out there. It seems like people want it, or this is what people need. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the... Uh, the death of a product right there is just saying, oh, people need this, so I'm going to put it out there without knowing if they do or not. And, I, you know, I actually, at a little meetup group here in San Diego, um, I, I get this question from time to time when I'm talking to people about internet business. It's like, well, how do you know what product, you know, which product you should do? And I'm like, oh, that's such an interesting question and easy to answer. You ask. Yeah. <laughs> How awesome. I mean, so this simple. is actually very <laughs> profound to say, what product do you bring your market? You just simply ask them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a huge thing. I can't bring that point home enough. I just love that idea that if you want to know, you just ask. So Totally. And that brings us to the final step in our online business blueprint, and that is to convert the site visitors into cash. So once you've got your product, how do you now... Take that product, put it on your site, and make it so that the people who are visiting your site will now pay cash to get that product. Well, this all starts, obviously, with something called the sales page, the place where they go that you drive them to some kind of landing page, something they click through to. And, uh, you know, one form of the sales page that I'm sure many listening to this are familiar with is the long sales page with all the information. And there's all kinds of back and forth on what's effective and what's not. And is the long sales page dead? But the truth of the matter is they still work. Your sales page may be a long copy sales page like that. It may be a, a shorter form or a video. You know, there's been some very effective things with video being done, demonstrating the product and showing it and, you know, after 10 minutes or so of showing it, inviting them to buy. And, you know, that's something you'll have to test out for your own business. 